Hey everybody, this is Tao at The Forge, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some changes I made to my Peasant Cube. So that's been an ongoing project, and that's actually one of the cool things about Cube, is that you know it's the kind of thing where you just keep working at it, and every time a new set comes out, you're always looking at upgrades to it. So I was looking at it, and um, also I have to give a props to uh, MTG uh, Magic the Amateuring. Um, they recently had a podcast on Peasant Cube, and I got some ideas from there, and I took some uh, some inspiration from them. But I also looked around and saw a few other upgrade cards, and plus we have some new sets like Ixalan, Amaket, and Kaladesh that I haven't uh, hadn't included anything in. So I made some um, changes here. Hopefully they're for the better. Now, if you disagree with any of the changes I made, um, you know, or if you have other suggestions, then please let me know in the comments. Um, you know, I want to make this cube as as good as I can. Now, of course, the thing is I need to uh, remind you guys it is a peasant cube, so that means that it's only commons and uncommons. So, you know, it, you, of course, there are rares and mythics and stuff that are better, but I can't put those in there. All right, so anyways, let's get started. So um, I'm using Cube Tutor here, and you can see like from the blogs, postings, I've got like three pages basically of blog postings. Um, and I haven't really done any explanation there, but just it's uh, charting the changes that I've made. So let's go and I'll talk about some of these. Now, some of the problem was with red. Uh, red was um, kind of too vanilla. They had a lot of creatures that had good ETB triggers, so you would enter the battlefield and do something. But then after that, it was just like super vanilla. So I wanted to uh, try and create, give red a little bit better creatures and better spells. So we have things like flaring flamekin. Um, this is okay. It has a, it gets a decent uh, mana sink, but it has to be enchanted to really do anything. Instead, I put in hit, I put in hissing iguana. So whenever another creature is put into a play from a graveyard from play, you may have hissing a guana deal one damage to target player so that's actually pretty sweet because you know when you're going multiplayer around the board you're going to have creatures being killed you know, all over the place and this this creature could you know actually ping people for quite a bit beetleback chief is out uh depending two you know a two two with two one red uh two one one goblins is good but i think scrapper champion is better a four mana two two that you can basically take the energy from it and put it in uh, make it into a three three uh and then it's a double striker is you know is pretty good uh also because it has a plus one plus one counter on it it fits with the with the theme or one of the themes of the cube a bold bear Inter in intimidator I found was a good card, but most people didn't really use it. Um, but anyways, so I've put through in uh, charging monster store instead. This is a five mana five five with trample and haste. I think it's a really good card. So uh, we'll see how that one does. Grenzo's Cutthroat is out. Um, basically, I like the dethrone uh, thing, but always attacking the player with the most uh, life is sometimes a little bit tricky. So, you know, it's a 1-1 one, one for 2 with first strike. It's okay, but I think for 2, I'd rather have Breath of Daragaz. So you can uh, kick her, uh, kick it for 2, and deals 1 damage to each creature without flying in each player. So if you're playing 4 players, that could be like, you know, pinging a whole bunch of tokens and or whatever. And then also doing 3 damage. If you paid the kicker, it does 4 damage to each creature without flying in each player instead. So for 4 mana, you can, you know, do like essentially 12 damage around the board and also wipe like a few creatures. You know, um, that could just be like seriously backbreaking. All right, so Shatter is a good card. Um, there's a lot of artifacts in the deck, but a Braid is just strictly better. So, you know, destroy target artifact. A Braid deals three or uh, does three damage to target creature. Shatter can only destroy artifact, and it's the same mana cost. So, a Braid's in. Incendiary Sabotage is a creature, or is an instant for four, two and two red, as an additional cost to cast it, sacrifice an artifact, and deals three damage to each creature. Okay, but one thing I found is that these curses actually make things a lot better for uh, red. Like red doesn't really have curses, uh, black and green do, but the red curses are this red curse is pretty good. So you can put it on a player, and if they're attacked, then the person who attacks them gets a colorless, or whenever that creature is a, that player is attacked, you create a colorless artifact token. Each opponent who attacks that player does the same thing. So uh, it gives people an incentive to attack other people. Um, 
Incendiary Flow is out. Three damage to target creature or player, uh, and it exiles the person, uh, the player. Instead, we get Lust for War. It's a little more expensive, higher up on the curve, but you get to enchant a creature. When enchanted creature becomes tapped, Lust for War deals three damage to that creature's controller. So basically, it makes it so that creature essentially can't attack unless that their its owner is willing to take three damage for it. Right? And it has to attack, right? So a tanted creature has to attack each turn if able. And so what you can do is put it on like a one one and then people are just gonna let that thing swing through and you know basically uh, get this thing to ping uh, ping its owner down for quite a bit. Fireball I thought was pretty good, um, but again, it deals X damage divided evenly, rounded down among any number of target creatures or players, and then you have to pay more to, to target more targets beyond the first. I thought Right of the Raging Storm would be better, so 5 mana. You can't, um, basically, it's an enchantment, but at the beginning of each player's upkeep, they get a 5-1 red elemental creature token named Lightning Ranger. Uh, if it has Trample Haste and at the beginning of the end step, sacrifices. So they only get it for their turn, but Lightning Ranger can't attack you or any of your Planeswalkers. Uh, we don't have Planeswalkers, so that's not relevant, but basically this thing can't, everyone gets a 5-1 red elemental at the beginning of their turn that they can attack with, but they can't attack you. All right, so anyways, Ballista Charger, when this uh, is out, okay, so it, it deals one damage to target creature or player when it attacks. It's a 6-6, six, six, and has crew 3 uh, for 5, but I found Shrining of, Shrine of Burning Rage. Now, this is mainly for red, but it can be used for other cards as well. So at the beginning of your upkeep, or whenever you cast a red spell, put a charge counter on Shrine of Burning Rage. So red spells are going to accelerate this pretty fast, but uh, non-red spells can also, uh, non-red players can also use this as well. Um, basically, you can sacrifice it and deals damage equal to the number of charge counters on it to a target creature or player. So over the course of the game, this thing could be like easily have like 10 or 15 counters on it, you know, and then you know you could just like one shot someone for three mana. So that's pretty good. Uh, Beetleform Mage is a Simic card, uh, meaning it's a green and blue card. Um, Beetleform Mage gets plus two plus two, gains flying and trample. That's actually pretty good. Um, but Shardless Agent, I originally thought it was only a um, a rare, but it is actually was printed in Uncommon. So. We can put Shardless Agent in, and it has Cascade, which allows you to basically free cast another card. Um, Experimental Aviator, 5 mana, it's for 0-3 with flying, and it creates two one one colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens. Again, it's a good blocker, and you get some Thopters out of it, but I found that uh, probably Jesse and Thief would be better. So it, it's a Prowess 3-1, uh, three, uh, 3 mana, 1-3. Um, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card, right? So, you know, being able to draw extra cards, I think, is pretty important. So hopefully Jesse and Thief will do it, but, you know, not sure which one. They're, this is a little bit less costed. It gives you card advantage. I, I like the body on this. Um, it's a 1-3 instead of a 0-3. So, you know, it doesn't have flying, but overall it's okay. So Tragic Slip is out. Curse of Shallow Graves is better. I talked about curses earlier. Curses are just so good. So basically this is whenever someone attacks the enchanted creature, um, the or enchanted player, they get a 2-2 black zombie. Um, so again, that's a way of encouraging other people to attack the other players. Um, Shrieking Affliction is out. Um, I think that overall it's really hard for players to get empty handed sometimes and they it's probably too avo easily avoided to, to, uh, to use Shrieking Affliction. So instead I put in Curse of Disturbance. So whenever, it's basically the same as the other curse, so whenever someone attacks that player, uh, you get to create a 2-2 black zombie creature token and the opponent that attacked uh, that player does the same thing. Okay, so March Flitter is out. Again, uh, you get your 1-1 one, one for 1, and then you get uh, 2 Goblin Rogues, sure. Uh, instead, Gifted Aetherborn is in, a 2-mana two 2-3 two, with Death Touch and Lifelink. It's pretty sweet. It's a pretty important that it has Death Touch as well, and I'll uh, talk about why in just a minute. Uh, Strands of Night is out, so paying 2 mana, pay 2 life, sacrifice a swamp, and put target creature card from your graveyard into play. It, it is actually pretty good. Um, I'm not too sure if this is the right call to take this out, 
But Baleful Eidolon is actually pretty sweet too. It's a 1-1 one, one for 2 with Death Touch, and uh, you can also bestow it for 5. Now, I really wanted a few more Death Touchers because of this. Uh, so I took Thraben, Gargo uh, Thraben Gargoyle out, and instead I put in Pathway Arrows. So this is a 1-mana artifact that you can equip for 2. This creature has 2-mana tap. This creature deals 1 damage to target uh, creature. If a color of this creature is dealt damage this way, tap it. Now what you, what you can do with this is you can attach it to a creature with Death Touch, and then it does 1 damage to a target creature, and then that creature just dies. Right, so because it has death touch, so this might be pretty good. Now, the next one's actually kind of funny. Underhanded designs, I uh, took that out and put in Pale Rider of Trustad. I thought that was better, but then later on, I ended up taking out Pale Rider of Trustad for something else. So I'm not really going to talk about this one too much. Okay, Spore Mound is out uh, for five mana. You know, just uh, getting like a bunch of green sapperlings is, is okay. You know, none of these are awful. But Nemesis of Mortals, again, is six mana and gives you, and then later on, eight or nine mana, you can use monster, get Monstrosity five. Um, and it also is one less to cast one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. So it's possible that you could get this out a lot faster. And then you can also monstrosity it, um, and it also is one less to cast for each creature in your graveyard as well. So this is actually a pretty sweet card that you could get out fairly quickly, depending on you know how many of your creatures get killed. Okay, Carapace Forger. I found the artifact theme um, just wasn't working nearly as well as I thought it was. So, like a lot of these artifact generating cards are coming out. Instead, we got Hooting Mandrills, which has Delve. It's a six mana four four, but you could get it out fairly quickly by delving. Um, you know, still a Delve four four trampler, trampler is a good card. All right, so we had a few lands here like Colony Garden, Lanowar Reborn, and Bujuka Bog. Those ones were. Um, basically extra lands, but they just favored black or green because like it's hard for people to pick those things without actually you know playing those colors and really there's not really a ton of graveyard strategy so Bajuka Bog was you know not really that great uh, Relic of Progenitus for the same reason is out because there's not really a lot of graveyard strategies in this uh, Crackdown Construct is we don't really have that many artifacts uh, activated with activated abilities um, some do but um, I found that this one wasn't as good as I maybe thought it could have been so instead I took these cards out and put in all the border posts now, I like the border posts because the like it costs three mana to get them out, but their actual ability where you can pay one, return a basic land you control, and just put this out onto the battlefield tapped, you know, is actually pretty sweet. So you can get this down basically for one, you know, of any color mana, and then later on you can produce extra mana. It's a way of ramping it, and this could be valuable to basically almost anybody who might want to, you know, who might want to draft it. So we've got all five border posts in here, right? Um, this next one is probably the hardest one I've had to make. I thought that land tax maybe made white too powerful. Let me know what you think about this one because I really, really, really don't know. I, I really feel like I'm going to put land tax back into the deck um, just because white seems super powerful. But, you know, when I did play test it earlier, it was green blue that just kind of dominated. Now with red uh, getting a, a ton of upgrades, it might be better and black having curses. Um, and stuff like that might make it better too. So white might need the land tax um, in order to make it more competitive. So that might go out. And um, but instead, I put in mana tithe, uh, just a one, one a one mana, or it's basically a tax of one uh, where you can counter a spell. Uh, definitely, I think mana tithe is the worst card of the two. But you, it's not just about playing just all the best cards. It's about balancing the power. So I'm not sure which is like if land tax is just too backbreaking. Um, mana tithe seems to be a good one. No one really ever expects white to have counters, you know. So, you know, that could be a good one. Anyways, uh, Crypt Rats is deals X damage to each creature and player, and you can spend only black mana to go to uh, to basically uh, trigger that ability. Um, it's okay, again, um, but I like Walk the Plank, so just straight up 2 mana sorcery speed removal, where you can just destroy target non-merfolk creature. 
All right, so moving on, contingency plan is out. I like the idea of being able to scry your, or not really scry, but like basically set up, you know, up to your next five moves and possibly get your delirium online. Um, there are some delirium cards in here, um, but Sphinx's tutelage is just too good. So whenever you just, whenever you draw a card, a target opponent puts the top two cards of his or her library into the graveyard, um, and then later on you can tap it. Uh, or basically, if they're also when they put those two cards in the graveyard, if they both non-land cards that share a color, which is very likely, uh, then you repeat that process, right? So that's actually could be really killer. And blue actually has a lot of ways to get extra card draw. So that could be like that's why I said Sphinx's tutelage is just too good. You can't really leave it out. Uh, and you know, especially when your opponent only has a forty-card deck, milling them out's not really that hard. Right, so okay. Going back, we have uh, here. I took out Pale Rider of Prostad and put in Phyrexian Reclamation. And it's funny because later on I realized I had two Phyrexian Reclamations, and so I had to take it out. Uh, Chainer's Edict is out. Uh, being, basically, making someone sacrifice a creature is good, but the problem is that it's not really. Um, repeatable like yeah you can repeat repeat it later for seven mana but shriek maw is actually pretty sweet for that same thing you get uh comes into play destroy target non-artifact non-black creature you can evoke it so you can basically just put it onto the battlefield and sacrifice it right away um later on like i put in something like momentary blink so you could actually blink it and you could just uh, exile your target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control, right? So you could put it down before it um, before it has to be sacrificed. You could bounce it with momentary blink, then wait for that trigger to resolve, and then um, basically um, put it back down, and it wouldn't have to be sacrificed. And you also trigger it again and destroy another non-black creature. So uh, momentary blink is in there with Shriek Maw, and this is actually a very good card. Um, so I'm taking out Unruly Mob, which I think was just not nearly as good. Okay, uh, so here are some other ones. Um, so Maze of Ith is in, so you can untap a target attacking creature. Okay, prevent all combat damage will be dealt to and dealt by that creature this turn. So you don't have to do this if the creature is even attacking you. You could just do it to help out someone else on the table and keep them in the game or or something like that, or as a negotiation tactic. So Maze of Ith, I think, is just too good. Um, so I tried to take something out, and Daredevil Dragster was not that good, so I took that out. Pyroblast is, is pretty good, um, giving red a counter against blue, but it's very specific. So instead of Pyroblast, I put Pyromancer's Assault. So whenever you cast your second spell each turn, Pyromancer's Assault deals two damage to target creature or player. So a lot of times you can be casting like, you know, two or uh, sometimes, you know, three uh, spells per turn, off very often too. So if you've got Pyromancer's Assault at four, then, you know, being able to ping your opponent for two uh, is pretty sweet. Terrarion I really like, um, but it's basically like a free card draw that's delayed. So instead, I put in Crystal Shard. Crystal Shard is uh, three and a tap or one three mana for three and a tap, three or a blue and a tap, return target creature to its owner's hand unless its controller pays one. So here now we can start uh, reusing like all the ETB triggers that whatever creature goes. I think this will be like almost like a first draft, right? So like if you got the, if you saw this, you would almost have to take this immediately um, because that's just a really good ability. So returning your own creature to your hand, um, you know, it is just so good because like you could do that for Shriek Maw, for instance. Like Shriek Maw comes in, uh, you know, you evoke it, it kills an opponent's creature, then you basically pay one blue, tap your crystal shard and return it to your hand, um, you know, before it has to sacrifice. That could be just, you know, devastating. So I really like this card and hopefully it's not too powerful. Otherwise I'll have to take it out, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we have a few other ones. So Revolutionary Rebuff is out. So just counter target non-artifact spell is uh, ponders in there instead. So basically just ex extra card draw and scrying. Uh, Psychotog. Psychotog is, is a really strong card. Like old Cookie Face is pretty cool. But the problem is that it pretty much is better for one-on-one -on -one matches rather than, you know, multiplayer matches. You know, removing your cards from your graveyard, great, is okay. But discarding cards from your hand is... 
you know, is, you know, only okay, especially when you, when you're going multiple players. So, I don't know, Psychotog didn't really work out like I thought it would. Instead, I put in Cavern Harpy. Okay, so Cavern Harpy is a two mana, two one with flying, comes into the battlefield play, um, when it comes into play, return a blue or black creature you control to its owner's hand. So again, if you're playing with, with something like Shriekma or um, something else, you can basically uh, put this down anytime. You can pay one life, return Cavern Harpy to its owner's hand as well. So if someone tries to target it, you can pay one life and just like put it back in your hand and, and protect it. So it'd be very difficult to remove this. Okay, Valakut Predator is out. Um, basically, whenever land enters the battlefield, it gets plus two, plus two, which is okay. But Stormblood Berserker, I think, is better. Where it's a two mana, one, one. It can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. And when it was dealt, uh, if an opponent was dealt damage this turn, this creature enters the battlefield with two plus one, plus one counters on it. So instead of being a one, one, it can be a three, three for two with, um, basically, with Menace. Right? So... Jade Mage is, again, uh, decent, but um, um, the Sapperling strategy was not really that great, so instead put in Conclave Naturalists. Uh, basically, being able to destroy target artifact or enchantment is important in this cube because there's so much artifacts and enchantments. It's not really fair if someone can like just put a whole bunch of curses on you if they chose like black red for instance and then you just end up dying from the curses they have no way to get rid of those enchantments so i have to have some form of enchant remo enchantment to removal conclave naturalist is kind of a decent way to get there okay so foundry hornet was again decent as well but instead i put in mardu shadow sphere now the reason why i like this for black is because you can play it pay its dash cost it basically gets haste can attack at the beginning you know and it's uh at it can attack right away on, on your turn and then come back to your hand. And when it attacks, each opponent loses one life. So it's doing at least three damage when it comes out every time, uh, one to each of your opponents, and then whoever it hits is going to you know, take another one as well. So I think Mardu Shadow Sphere is just a really great card to keep. Parapet Watcher is another gr a good defender type card, but I think I'd rather have Tinker. So Tinker, you can sacrifice an artifact. There are still servos and stuff like that in here, and Thopters, so you could actually just sacrifice one of those and then go look for your look for an artifact and just put it straight up into play. So that could be like the Stratodon or something like that. So Tinker, I think, is actually a pretty decent card to have in here. Okay, War Flare is out, basically a combat trick, just going for Lightning Helix. War Name Aspirant is out, uh, and instead I put in Flame Rift, where it deals four damage to each player. So, like, basically you're going to take four, but, you know, situationally this could be really good. and does 12 damage, like, to your opponent's total for only two mana, so, you know, that's actually pretty sweet. Okay. Last page here. I took out uh, Curd Ape. Curd Ape is uh, possibly a 2-3 for 1 if you control a forest. And that's likely to happen. Um, it's, a, again, a good card. But I think Tattermunge Winch is a better card. So each blocked creature gets plus 1 plus 0, gains Trample until end of turn. And the good thing about this is that you don't have to actually do it just on your turn. You can, or with your creatures, it's just a block creatures. So... You know, when someone's attacking, if someone blocks and, you know, let's say they're, you know, there's a combat trick or something like that, you could actually just tap this or activate this ability and kind of mess things up on the board and change the, the way that you think things would go. So Tattermunge Witch is actually, you know, I think a, a really good include. It kind of allows people to mess around with the board state. Skyrider Elf was a Simic card, but um, basically got a count plus one plus one counters on it for each color of mana to spend to cast it. So if you got four mana, it would come out as a four four flyer for uh, for four. You know that's okay. Um, but Curious Follower does kind of a, a better thing. So untap another target permanent. It doesn't seem like it, but that could be a land. That could be you know a surprise defender. Um, it could be a lot of different things. So I think Curious Follower is actually probably the better choice of those two. Okay, Augur of Bolas is out. Um, like it's a decent card. You can reveal it, but there's how many sorceries or instants do we really have? Like we have a good amount, but um, Eternals of Harsh Truth is Hearth Truths is better, I think. So when we, whenever it becomes blocked, depending a player loses two life. Uh, whenever it attacks and isn't blocked, you get to draw a card. 
So, you know, the card draw is just amazing, so pretty much kept that in. Extra Phyrexian Reclamation is out. Torment of Scarabs is another curse. Um, at the beginning of Enchanted Player's Upkeep, that player loses three life until unless he or she sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. So, you know, making someone lose life because they, you know, because they are not lose life, but lose their card advantage or sacrificing permanence or take three, uh, that's, that's really bad. You know, so, you know, it could be possible that maybe black is too powerful in this cube now. So I'll have to kind of play test it and see how it does. Um, anyways, Stitchwing Scab um, is basically a blue zombie. Same thing with Stitch Mangler. They're both, you know, okay cards, but uh, looking at Exelon's cards, uh, Dead Eye Quartermaster is a little bit better. You know, basically you can get a 4 mana 2 2, but you can search your library for any equipment or vehicle, reveal it, put it into your hand. Right? So that's actually pretty sweet, you know, being able to fetch out something uh, and tutor out like, you know, a, a, an artifact or a vehicle. That could be really relevant, especially because we have really good artifacts and vehicles. So anyways, uh, Navigator's Ruin is another card from Ixalan. So at the beginning of your end step, if you attack with a creature this turn, target opponent puts the top four cards of his or her library into the graveyard. So again, we're kind of on this uh, blue mill type strategy where blue could potentially mill out some players by, you know, forcing them to do something like that, uh, like something like this with Navigator's Ruin. Okay, Glint Sleeve Artisan, again, you know, it's a 2-2 two, two for 3, it has Fabricate 1, so it could be a 3-3 three, three for 3, or you can do 2 with a Servo, but uh, Bellowing Aegisar, I think, is better. 6 mana, uh, whenever it's dealt damage, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each other creature you control. So it's kind of like, you know, the it's kind of like a Phalanx Leader, but you know super super good you know like a three five a three five um no one's going to want to really like you know trade off with it no one also is going to want to like take three damage from it but if you block it then you know puts a plus one plus one counter on every other creature you control so might make it really difficult for opponents to deal with that so now this charge where you basically make a bunch of elephants as well for new horizons. You can enchant a land and it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. And then you can add two mana of any one color for, uh, with that land to your mana pool. So basically a form of land ramp. Mana Morphos is out. Uh, so Raging Swordtooth is in. So Raging Swordtooth enters the battlefield that deals one damage to each other creature, and then it's a 5-5 five, five Trampler. So 5-5 five, five for 5 is really good, with Trample is even better. You know, And when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each other creature. So that could be very relevant as well. Crass's Incubation is out. Um, I liked it. You know, uh, basically being able to make it so they can't attack or block or activate any of their abilities. Uh, but instead I put Shapers of Nature. Shapers of Nature is, uh, you know, put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature or remove a counter and draw a card. So, you know, again, card advantage and being able to add counters to just other creatures is pretty sweet. Guardians of Miletus was a good choice uh, to take out because, you know, it's a zero six is for three is really good. You know, as far as Defender goes, but, you know, I don't think anybody, like, this would be, like, almost a last pick almost all the time. So, I just took it out and instead put in Death Mask Duplicant. For, so, for 7 mana, you get to imprint 1. You can remove a target creature card in your graveyard from the game, and if that has Double Strike or Flying, Fear, uh, First Strike, Haste, Landwalk, Protection, Trample, then this creature will get it, you know. So, that, I think, could be, you know, a game ender if you manage to resolve one of these. Mirror Enforcer, again, we're kind of getting away from the artifact uh, theme of the deck a little bit. So uh, Mirror Enforcer was just, you know, 4-4 four, four with Affinity is decent, but, you know, there's not enough support for Affinity. So instead I put in Ancestral, uh, Ancestral Statue. It would, I guess it would be different if it was Ancestral Statue, but uh, I don't even know what that, I don't even want to think what that would be like. Um, okay, we have a 4-mana 3-4. When Ancestral Ancestral Statue enters the battlefield, return a non-land permanent you control to its owner's hand. So again, we have some balance. You know, you're putting something back into your hand, and then you can put it uh, back onto the battlefield and, you know, re-trigger things uh, with that. Bottle Gnomes is decent. Uh, again, a 3 
three mana, one three with sacrifice bottle gnomes, you gain three life. But filigree familiar, I think, is just strictly better. Three mana, two two, so eh, about the same. It doesn't have as big of a butt, but you know, when it enters the battlefield, you get two life, so you get your two life right away. Um, and when filigree familiar dies, and you draw a card, so I'd rather get you know almost for the like fresh for the same price, you get two life right away, and then you get to draw a card later. This one, you get two. You know, you get really a better blocker, but then you have to sacrifice it. You can gain three life. So I think Filigree Familiar is the better one. Perilous Mirror is out. Uh, basically, it just deals two damage to target creature or player, and that's nice. But Shapeshifter is so much better. So Shapeshifter is six and has power and toughness at up to seven, but neither may be more than seven. Set them when Shapeshifter comes into play. You may change them during your upkeep. So basically, what this means is he has... Uh, this is a uh, seven total power toughness creature. So if you give it six, uh, if you give it six um, power, then it, its toughness would be a one. So seven minus six, right? So basically, you can divide up seven and put it however you want. So if you feel like on your upkeep that you need a big blocker, you could make this a zero seven. Right, and then it would just be a blocker, and then later on, if someone was you know left open, you can make it a six one, you know, or a five two, or whatever, you know, and basically use this as kind of a, a changing creature to you know, well, I guess flavor, flavorfully, it's it's right there, so you know, as a shapeshifter, so it can change at the beginning of your turn to be whatever you need it to be at the time. All right, Iron League Steed is out again. You know this. We're trying to uh, phase out this uh, fabricate theme, and instead put in Treasure Keeper. Okay, so whenever it dies, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non land card with converted mana three or less, which is quite a bit in the deck, uh, in the cube. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. So free casting is totally broken, and I think people would really like to be able to do it here. So that's why I put this in. Put all the revealed cards not cast this way in the bottom of your library, so you're not even milling them. So, you know, overall, it's pretty good. Okay, so set Scorpion is a death toucher for one, one, one for one. I had to take it out. Um, I feel bad about that because um, I do want to have a number of death touch creatures in the, uh, um, in the cube. But instead, we got Kujar Seed Sculptor. So when it enters the battlefield, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Um, you know, you'd think like, well, you know, this is also kind of meh. But if you can bounce this, right, then you can, you know, especially there may be ways to repeatedly bounce this. Like if you had Maze of Ith or something like that, or um, not Maze of Ith, but um, was the other card where you can like basically repeatedly bounce something. Um, this could potentially just allow you to like plug a whole bunch of counters on things. So, all right. So we also have Predator Howl. Predator's Howl is out. Uh, this one is a fairly easy one to take out. You know, the wool getting wolves is okay, but um, but I think Saddleback Legac is better. You know, come on, it's a lizard with a saddle, right? Like straight out of the Creation Museum. Uh, so when Saddleback Legac enters the battlefield, support two. You get to put two plus one plus one counters of each up to two other target creatures. So, you know, it's a four mana three one. So it's you know got a decent attack, and then you get to um, basically have some, put some plus one plus one counters on things. And this also was a really good one to take out. I originally put this in thinking it would be kind of like a white spell skite. Um, so if an opponent plays a spell or ability that could target a flag bearer in play, that player chooses at least one flag bearer as a target. But the problem is that, like, basically what it means is that every if someone could target this, they have to target this. But a lot of this, uh, you know, a lot of things like you would say, like, well, okay, so I have to enchant this creature with a curse. Well, okay, great. Now, now this guy's got that, you know, or you can say like, well, you know, like, okay, like, I'm going to kill a target creature. Okay. It kills this thing. But does white really want to do that? Like if you've got a creature out and someone's attacking someone else, do you really want them to like redirect the spell over to you? You know, I would say probably not. So I took that out and instead put in Elite Scale Guard. So Elite Scale Guard is when it enters the battlefield, it bolts your two. So you can put two plus one plus one counters on another on other creatures you control. And then whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it attacks, you can tap target creature defending player controls. So basically you can make it very difficult for your opponent to 
uh, to block anything because you can keep on attacking things with counters and this would fit, uh, square pretty nicely with almost any other color but especially with blue where they have like a lot of ninjutsu creatures and stuff like that so anyways those are the changes i made um to the cube and let me know what you think in the comments like are, do you think they're good changes do you think uh, any ones were mistakes what do you think about land tax do you think i should put that back in and if you do what do you think i should take out so anyways that's it for now let me know in the comments what you think thanks for watching and i'll see you next time